Warning. The following program may contain language and other elements that are not suitable for some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. You've been fucking warned. Hey guys, Johnny Farrow here and welcome to another episode of Musician Kitchen. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a wicked citrus herb brown rice. Now, in, in my last week's episode, in, in the description for this week, in the ingredients, I put fresh oregano. Now, it's really whatever herb you like. I actually could not find fresh oregano at my grocery store this week, so I actually grabbed fresh thyme instead. Thyme is a great substitute. It works really well, just as well as oregano. But let's get into the ingredients here. So we got brown rice. We have fresh herbs. We got an orange, a lemon, and a lime, sea salt, black pepper, and of course, water. All right, so the first thing that we are gonna do is we're gonna get our liquid boiling. Now, with brown rice, um, or with any rice, by the way, with this recipe, I don't do short grain. The reason for that is that short grain has a way faster cooking time. It just doesn't allow for the, the liquid and the, the citrus and the herb to soak in as much as I like. You can try it if you want, I'm sure it's fine. It's just not preferred as far as I'm concerned. And now whatever rice you use, you're gonna wanna go based off the cooking time on the back of the pack, because it is gonna vary for the type of rice, for the length of the grain. This one is a 35 minute total cooking time once, the, once we're up to a boil and simmering. So what we're gonna do here, it takes two and a half cups of water. And again, check the back of your pack for that. Again, different rice, different grain, amount of water can vary. So what we're gonna do, well, first what we're gonna do for the citrus, the citrus juice in this is going to supplement the water. So basically we're gonna juice all of our citrus into, um, into our measuring cup and then whatever is left of the two and a half cups will be water, okay? And before we do that though, what we're gonna do is we're gonna zest some of this citrus off. Now, I actually prefer using a zester to do this. If you have a zester, use it. It's a fun little tool. I actually can't find mine, so I'm just gonna use a grater and use the, the finer side of a grater, right? So you don't need to zest the whole thing. You just wanna get a little zest. This is something you're gonna actually end up putting into your dish later. You know, just enough to take some of the skin off um, and just go around and do a little of this and I do it before I juice because if you take this and cut it in half and then juice it and then try to zest it, it will be a royal pain in the ass. So do that, get some of our lemon. And you don't need a ton of this because the thing with the skin of these, the rind is going to be bitter. So you don't want a lot of it. This is just gonna be something that gets added in to the dish to give it a little bit of dimension without adding a ton of extra flavor. And again, I don't want my rice to be bitter particularly, right? All right, you just scrape that off the back and then I just stick this into like a little dish just to set aside for later when I'm ready for it. All right. Now, cutting this in half. And again, this is simple, we're just juicing this shit, right? So you're just cutting it in half and then juicing it and juicers are our friends. You can totally squeeze this by hand if you want. Um, into your, your cup. I just find it easier to aim when you have a spout. <laughs> so uh, going and just juicing like you would. Nothing secretive or fancy about my juice method, it's just juice. And then at this point you can discard the rest of the fruit. And really work the juice out of here. Get as much as you can, because this is really, the, it's interesting just the way that this works with the rice. It really does bring the dish to life a lot. Whew, splashy, splashy. And I usually pour through the um, side of my, of my uh, juicer that's got the strainer on it. You don't have to. If you want chunks in there, it's not like it'll kill the dish or anything. That's just my preference. And do the same here with our lemon and our lime. Now for these guys, I have a different juicer. This is too small for the orange, but for the lemon and the lime, it's perfect. Oh, mull that right into there. And with this style juicer, you'll notice I do a squeeze. And then I'll pop it, it'll get stuck up on this, this one part. So I pop it down and I do a couple more squeezes on it just to make sure 
I wring every bit of flavor out of this thing, right? Same with my lemon. Lemon! No? Anyone know that song? It's a U2 song. It's a good one. It's called Lemon. Go figure. All right, so we got our lemon juice, and we got... Uh, we got about, like two-thirds of a cup in there. So we're going to just put water in to supplement the rest. So that's two cups right there. Again, we need two and a half cups. So we got that. And then another half cup. And there we go. And then we're going to get this onto the heat on high to bring it up to a boil. And we're off, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to just wait for this to get to a boil, then we're going to bring up our rice. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, so we are just about boiling here. In fact, we are totally boiling here. So I got a cup of my rice measured out. Now, this is a brown rice mix. Use whatever rice you want. You know, if you're into jasmine rice, basmati rice, even if you want to use white rice, that's fine. I personally prefer the brown. And I'm a wild guy, so I like a nice wild rice medley mix here happening. And then before we throw it into the water, what we're going to do is throw about a teaspoon of salt. About a teaspoon of pepper, black pepper. Maybe a shy little bit less than a teaspoon on the pepper. And then we drop the rice in. Oh, yeah! Give it a quick little mix as it comes. You know, when you drop something, this is a little pro tip, when you drop anything into a pan of hot water. Unless it was already hot itself, it does drop the temperature a little bit. As you notice, my pot is no longer boiling. So you want to get it back up to a boil before you bring it back down to a simmer. So I'm going to let it ha do that really quick. And while I'm waiting for that to kind of get back up and then once, once it's simmering, you know, uh, one of the things you can do during this time is get your herb ready. The herb and the zest do not go in at the beginning of this dish. They're going to go in at about the halfway point. So again, the time on this, once it's simmering, is about 35 minutes. So at about like the 15, 20 minute mark, I'm going to go ahead and toss in my herb. And we're going to basically, you know, we're just going to clean off some herb off of this, these branches here. And uh, again, this is fresh thyme. I usually do this with oregano. I just couldn't find oregano for whatever reason. And uh, I'm not going to lie, it's a bit of a pain in the ass cleaning the herbs off of these because you're literally just picking them off these little branches. And, you know, it, it's just a, it's a royal fucking pain in the ass. But worth it for the flavor. And you got time anyway because, you know, huh, you got time. And it couldn't use more time, um, you know, because you're going to wait for this to boil. And look, we're boiling now. So I'm going to drop this down to a low. And... You can set a timer at this point if you want. I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to look at my watch, you know, in about 15 minutes. I'll uh, go back to it and add in my herb and my my zest. And by the way, I have all the zest here. You don't even need to use all this zest. Like, this is a lot of flavor. And like I said, the zest is a bit on the bitter side. So you don't, you know, you can use like a teaspoon of this and it would probably be plenty. I may throw it all in, A, because I don't like to waste, and B, because I actually don't mind a little bit of a bitterness. Um... By the way, one other pro tip, keep an eye on your pot. Um, mine has this little thingy in there to kind of release some of the steam, which is good. If your pot doesn't have a steam release on it, one thing you can do while things are simmering is you can actually kind of lean the lid a little bit so there's a little steam outlet. But by and large, it, you probably won't run into that, especially if you don't fully fill your pot up with water, right? So again, just kind of cleaning off these little thyme branches and you want to go until you got about it again about a teaspoon of the herb maybe a teaspoon and a half depending on how um, predominant of an herb flavor you want and you know this stuff smells amazing like oh my god the scent coming off of this is so it's so aromatic it's almost therapeutic. It's almost like aromatherapy making this dish, you know, which is actually honestly one of the reasons I enjoy it. And funnily enough, I haven't actually made it in a while. 
not because of any other reason that I just honestly didn't think to. And then, you know, prepping to do this show, and I was like, oh, I should bring that back. It's been a minute. And this is one that I actually developed when I was working at Wegmans back in western New York. And I think it was while I was there that I actually started tinkering around with this and kind of coming up with this recipe. This is actually a Johnny Farrow originally re original recipe. I've never seen this recipe anywhere else. Um, or this even a concept particularly like this. That's not to say it doesn't exist. It just means I haven't found it yet. So uh, for the moment, it's my recipe. And this is also, you know, it's a really easy recipe to do. It's a little tedious with the pulling the herb and everything, but not a hard recipe. Um, and it really is a good one if you're trying to impress someone. Like, uh, you know, if you want to really impress your family or if you got a date coming over and you're making dinner and you really want to like you know um seal the deal so to speak as far as it being a successful date whatever that means to you don't keep it pg-13 here ladies and gentlemen it's not what i meant but um you know it is it's it's a dish that impresses and it's really simple and yet at the same time it's you know very it's just delicious and it's, it's a, it's, it takes a dish that's, generally speaking, on its own pretty boring because rice is rice, you know? Even wild rice is still it's fucking rice, you know? Uh, and it just does a little something to give it a little bit of kick, a little character, a little dimension. Oh, and by the way, I don't really talk very much about this, but um, wine pairings, only because I happen to know from past experience in, in serving this dish, pairs really nice with rosé. Um, obviously, it goes really well with, uh, with chicken. Or uh, pork, it's a good one to go with white meat. I mean, not that you can eat it with, with, with beef if you want to, but it really pairs nicely with uh, chicken and a nice rosé. <clears throat> or like a sweet or white wine. Yeah, that's true. I never really do anything about wine, wine pairings. I should really do more of that, huh? If you guys are interested in me getting into more like telling you kind of wines that'll go nicely with something, let me know in the comments below because I would actually be interested to know that and that's something I can kind of look into for future uh, future episodes. Now, at this point, there's still kind of leaves on here, but they're kind of sparse, so I'm going to pick a little more, but then I'm probably just going to throw the rest of this shit out, because I am a lazy motherfucker, as you know. And I almost got what I need anyway, so I'll pick a little more here. And I'll actually pick enough to have a little extra, because one of the other things I like to do that's fun with this dish is because it's so colorful, is uh, garnish. You know, you can use this for garnish on your plate or your bowl or whatever, however you're serving it. So we are all set now on our zest and our time. We are zesty and we have lots of time. Oh, so uh, we're going to let this roll for about another 10 minutes or so. It's going to be at about the 15, 20 minute mark. We'll go ahead and add these guys in and then we'll uh, let it roll a little more and then come back for the finale. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so we are at about the 15, 20 minute mark, so I'm gonna check on this, and oh, that is just lovely. Take a look at what we got going here so far. So we got about a little more than half of the liquid gone there. So what we're gonna do now is mix in our thyme. Again, about a teaspoon of thyme there. And this is fresh thyme, by the way. I don't really recommend, I'm going to do about a teaspoon of my zest. I don't really recommend doing this with uh, dried seasonings. If you must, you know, and if you just can't find the thyme to, to deal with the, the, you know, the fresh seasoning, or if you just can't find it, anything good at your store, you can totally use a dried seasoning. Just use half the amount. The dried seasonings tend to be a lot more concentrated in flavor, right? And I'm just mixing this in a little bit here. You know, and just so you guys know, like it will, this will definitely have, you'll taste everything in here, but it's not a terribly overbearing flavor, if you know what I mean. I mean, you really, when you try it, You'll get what I mean, but now that's nicely mixed in there. So we're going to just return this to the heat. So we're back down, you know, we're still sitting at a simmer and we got about like another 15 minutes to go on this. So I'm going to set a timer and we'll be back in 15 minutes to see what the final product of this looks like. At this point though, if you want to keep an eye on it and check it after 10, 
just to be sure, depending on your burner. And, you know, my mine's on low, but it's kind of a, a hot, this burner burns very hot. So I may even check mine in 10 just to check. You know, this is the point where you want to start keeping an eye on it. You do not want your rice to burn. It will fuck up the whole dish. So, you know, and the other thing too is whenever you check it, give it a good you know, little mix, little toss. But check it in like 10 or 15 if you got kind of a normal stove and you just know that. Um, and then, yeah. So we'll be checking on this in a few, and then we'll be back to wrap this guy up. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so we're back, and this is just about where it needs to be. It has been on for about another 15 minutes. And would you just look at that? Like, that is freaking gorgeous. This is like the, the aroma coming off of this. Oh, my God, this smells incredible. Let's get this on a plate, shall we? Oh, yeah. And this, you know, a cup of this goes a long way because it's a cup of rice to two and a half cups of liquid. So you got, I mean, this is plenty of rice for a meal for a few people, you know? Oh, amazing grace. That is just phenomenal. And then, as I mentioned, if you want to get cute, you do a little bit of garnish. Take some of this, some of your zest that's left over. Just sprinkle it around. Some of your time. Because who, again, couldn't use a little more time in their life? And then if you want to get real fancy, and this is just putting it over the top, you take one of your herb branches, or a couple of them, rather, and you do that. These are not staying up easily. This works easier with oregano, by the way. Time's kind of a... It's got kind of a limp quality to it. But we'll make it work. We got this. There we go. Just to give it a little bit of height. And bada-bing! You got a little citrus herb rice oasis happening right there oh my god and again just the smell of this is so incredible and it really does enhance a meal it's again not you know the flavor on it you'll taste citrus like you'll taste notes of it and everything but it's not as overbearing as you might expect it to be it's just got a really beautiful nice flavor to it so guys i hope you enjoyed this recipe let me know in the comments below if you did if you have ideas on what to do to spin on this recipe i'm also interested to know that um and also uh guys just so you know uh next week is going to be the last episode of season two of musician kitchen and i'm going to make it a surprise so the, there will not be ingredients for next week in, in the description below because i kind of want it to be a surprise for you guys it's going to be a fun one um but that'll be the, the last episode of this season and then you know by all means let me know what you want to see for the next season you know i'm going to take a couple weeks off and regroup and got some things i'm doing but then you know i will be back at it and it's going to be awesome because the summer's coming up and there will be all sorts of killer fun recipes with for the summertime but let me know what you want to see check the description below for this recipe so you can have it in writing if you'd like and guys until next video i'm Johnny Farrow. I'll see you later. Mwah.